Hastily put together titles and gradient transitions showed the title of the show as well as the subject. It was a waste of the viewer's time. Stupid immature thoughts in my head thought it'd be funny to start the video out like this. I look like a total dweeb in this shirt and get up. I looked like that one Let's Player who got in trouble touching his naughties. Maybe it's my fashion sense or maybe I'm just that butt ugly. Who the hell's talking? Either way, throughout the past couple of days, I really haven't known what to review. And he wasn't any help. The fact that my April Fool's video got way more views than any of my actual work really did a number on me. Made me realize the shadows of the man I was will never go away. It's something that will never heal. I will always be the YouTube poop news guy. But I guess people will just have to deal with me being the YouTube poop news guy who never uploads YouTube poop related things anymore. The idea ate at me every day, like the flesh-eating bacteria that was found in my brain six months ago. I never amount to anything, my gamer show is a piece of shit, and I dress like a cowboy from a gay rodeo. Where is that coming from? It's coming from the voice of reason, as in there's no reason for you to be making these videos anymore. Why don't you make more YouTube poops, you dumb fuck? Shut up! Mama Luigi, lots of spaghetti. If I hear one more word, I'm turning this truck around, I swear. Oh, I'm scared. I think I might poop my pants. You know, poop, as in YouTube poop my pants. That's it. We turn it around. Uh, I turned around without having to hit reverb. So Max Payne, I believe the first one came out in, what was it, 2001 on the PlayStation 2, and then they had a PC version and they had an Xbox version. I've heard the Xbox version wasn't that great as far as ports go, but I think the second one had a better port. At least that, that's what I stole from a Cat Eckers video. Anyway, um, the PlayStation 2 and the PC version were a little bit different from each other. I know that because I have both of them, legit. Yeah, believe it or not, I paid for those. Can you believe that shit? So, um, I want to show you that. Since we're talking about the PlayStation 2 version a whole bunch in this video, I want to talk about the manual for the PlayStation 2 version and talk about what instruction manuals used to look like back in the day. Look at all the effort that went into making this cool little police dossier thing. It's all put together like a little file and you got all these little illustrations of stuff and quotes from the game and I almost said movie. I guess it is kind of like a movie, but we're not talking about that movie. Grabbing pills. Now, Max Payne, what if you've never seen Max Payne? What if you don't know a thing about Max Payne? The only Max Payne you know is that hernia that you've got. I can tell you what Max Payne's about, but I would rather show you this amazing trailer that was made for Max Payne back in 2001. Check this crap out. The intense story of a fugitive undercover cop who is framed for murder. A man with nothing to lose. Revolutionary bullet time gameplay slows down the action, showing bullets in flight, giving Max the edge against impossible odds. Prepare for pain. Max Pay. Get it now on PlayStation 2, Xbox, and PC. Rated M for Mature. Stop staring at my microphone. That's Max Payne in a nutshell. Help, I'm in a nutshell. Anyway, we'll get this video underway. Max Payne 1. We'll start with the PlayStation 2 version, and then we'll do a little bit of the PC version so I can show you the differences in the two. So, get your Berettas cleaned up, loaded, and locked, and we will do this thing. Look at them beautiful PS2 graphics. Look at that beautiful frame rate drop as soon as we get close to the middle of the stage. This is pretty much what the PS2 Max Payne is known for. Lots of frame rate drops, but it is the original version, and it's the version that a lot of us know. So I'm playing through the tutorial level, and I reap the benefits of finally playing this through a component cable. I have never noticed what this sign said before because of my really shitty TV connections. I couldn't read anything, so I never saw that Easter egg. Hey kids, have you ever wondered what monologue meant? This is what a monologue is. To make any kind of sense of it, I need to go back three years. Back to the night the pain started. Hey kids, do you know what loading is? Because on the PS2 version, you're going to see a lot of it. 
So basically, Max Payne is a cop, a uh, detective, NYPD. He's got a wife and a baby, but not for long. Also, the fact that this 66 Ford Fairlane is parked here really dates this whole picture. Did I mention this game is rated M for mature? No, 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 please God, no. How many dead babbies do you see in games even nowadays? So one beautiful thing about Max Payne is a thing called bullet time, where you slow down the action. Watch. Sweet. So as I was saying, Max Payne is a detective no. in the oh NYPD God, who used to have a wife and baby. No! It's at this point you get to the true first level of the game, the uh, Roscoe Street Station. Roscoe. It's here that you discover that your health items are painkillers. The pills would hold the pain back for a while. Hey, I wonder if you can go in the subway tunnel. Well, I guess you can. How far down can you go? Let's see. I'm still going. I'm still go- Man, how long is this? Whoa, what happened to the graphics? <laughs> oh shit. No, for real, how long is this tunnel? <laughs> Oh wow, it actually has an end. It's like a caved in spot here. I, I guess that's the end of it, huh? Do I have to walk? I gotta walk all the way back. I have to what? Whoa, whoa! Holy crap, the fucking subway just, just spawned out of that wall. <laughs> well, back where we were. Something that Max Payne relied heavily on was scripted events where you would hear enemies talking to each other. This sounds like boring old news, but this was a new thing at the time. Didn't the train go already? No idea. Let's just wait and see. It was kind of a nifty way of alerting you that enemies were nearby, too. Yeah, he's dead all right. Hey, it's me. And instances oh. like that is where shoot dodging and bullet time come in real handy. Hey. Also, can we time out so I can talk about all the desert eagles in this game? Why do so many of the bad guys have desert eagles? Desert eagle is not an inexpensive gun, y'all. That's a very expensive gun that takes very expensive ammo. Like, the smallest thing you can get for it's a 357 Magnum, but half the freaking um, early enemies in the game have this damn gun. You know they're about $1,500 to $2,000 a pop? I don't even have a Desert Eagle, and I've got an arsenal. i tell you what I did pick up here recently. I picked up this badass little 10 millimeter mama. Also, I do have two Berettas. I can dual wield. i tell you who else can dual wield two Berettas. Old Maxi Paney. Look at him handle them things in slow-mo. Look at him run out of ammo and switch to a pump shotgun. Action shot, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the pain in the butt. Paint at a max. You're killing me. I got something for the boss, Lupino all around. That kind of depends on who's asking. A friend or a junk squad plan. I looked it up, it's a thing. Another thing Max Payne had that a lot of other games didn't have at the time was interaction with a lot of random objects in the game. Objects that had no bearing on the plot or anything. It's just you could play with the soda machine or the vending machine or the sink or the toilet. Now this is something we take for granted and we see in just about every game now, but this was a new thing at the time. Also, this is a pretty famous scripted event. Now and again, you would find television sets that had uh, a show playing. In fact, Max Payne may be the first game ever to do that. I don't know. Also, please indulge me in this for just a second. My lady. My lord. My lady. My lord. My lady. My lord. My lady. My lord. There's also this infamously freaky scene. The flamingo speaks. He can speak here. It says, There's are more content television. That's mirrors are more fun than television. The, they are? Huh, so that's what I look like without a work shirt on. Also, there's junkies in this game. Yeah, drug junkies. And uh, if you shoot them, you hear the greatest death sound in any game ever. Flesh. 
So Max Payne has three chapters. In the first chapter, you'll mostly be killing mafia folk. They're trafficking a new designer drug that the people who killed Max Payne's babby and wife were high on at the time. They're getting the drugs straight from the source, which is a place called Acer Corporation. I think you know them pretty well. On the first few levels of the first chapter, you may not have to use bullet time all that much, but near the end of the first chapter, it becomes pretty clear that you have to to survive. It really helps that you can actually see where the bullets are flying too. Sometimes you'll even get these cool little kill cams at the end of your bloodshed, which combined with bullet time looks pretty awesome. But not everything is cocaine and hookers. In fact, sometimes the game can be a fucking pain in the ass. One thing I always loved about the game was the controls, and one thing I always hated about the game was also the controls. You see, Max Payne controls pretty good for a third-person shooter on the PS2 or PC in the early 2000s. It controls good for a shooter. It does not control good for a platformer. This game is one of those that tries to be a platformer sometimes, and it falls flat on its ass when it does. And when I say platformer, I mean more balancing act, and oh god, oh god, am I too close to the edge? There's no walk, there's no crawl, there's no creep, there's no nothing. You either run across this little rail right here, or you slowly carefully inch your way little bit little bit an inch adjust inch adjust it's a freaking headache and it happens too much in this game and as a matter of fact it's about to happen again right after that part i just did is another part where you have to inch across the railing here and this ain't even the worst part you want to see the worst part on the first part of the second chapter max Payne is in a nightmare which is the perfect analogy for what you have to do in this section of the game. Do you see that barely visible red line down there? Well, the floor is a bottomless pit, and you have to walk that red line to not fall in the bottomless pit. It's basically like the floor is made of lava, but the floor is made of nothing. What's even better is there's alternate routes, and routes that lead to nowhere and routes that you can only get to by JUMPING! Okay, look y'all, you're seeing component cable footage on a PS2, okay? I have played this same thing on the PC and it's easier to see the route. But we're not talking about that, we're talking about when you first get the first version of the game, Max Payne, on the PlayStation 2, shitty ass TV, shitty ass composite or <gasps> RF signal. And you've got the brightness turned all the way up on your TV trying to see this thin red little ass line. Oh, and did I mention the background music or should I say background noise? The baby was crying. I'm not even gonna bother showing you the other nightmare level that has this exact same thing, only with more jumping. It's bad. Just know it's bad. Luckily, if it gets too shitty for you and you just can't do this level, there is a level select cheat code that you can put in. Now, here's the thing. Max Payne is fun. In fact, it's an excellent game. It's a wonderful game. And, and shooting is fun. Bullet time is fun. It's when they tried to do things that were not shooting is when it started to not get fun. Like this scene right here where you're in the exploding building. You don't know what's going to kill you and what's not. Some of the stuff here, if you walk into, it's not going to hurt you, but some of it will. So it's kind of a, a weird game to figure out what's going to kill you and what's not and how close you can get to the fire without it hurting you. And if you should slow down or speed up because something, some triggered event might actually happen that you might get in the way of. Like right here, for instance, what did I touch? What did I rub up against? What killed me? In case you haven't noticed, we're on the PC version now, so now uh, enjoy the high quality video. So in the third chapter, when Max Payne kills every single mafia person who ever lived, he meets the real main villain of the game, which is actually the creator of Max Payne's mother. Wow, issues much? 
Also, if I don't talk about this next thing, people will ask me why I didn't talk about this next thing. There's this one fourth wall break in the second nightmare level that's pretty infamous. You're in a computer game, Max. The truth was a burning green crack through my brain. Weapon statistics hanging in the air, glimpsed out of the corner of my eye. Endless repetition of the act of shooting, time slowing down to show off my moves. The paranoid feel of someone controlling my every step. I was in a computer game. Funny as hell, it was the most horrible thing I could think of. The only thing I can add to this is the most horrible thing I can think of is being stuck with this face for the rest of your life. Throughout the whole game, he looks like he's got to take a wicked shit. Oh, speaking of. Unfortunately, after you get to the third chapter of the One game, of the, the levels all start to kind of run together. I mean, they're different levels set in different places, but the game starts to feel a little one-dimensional. Uh, plus, you're not killing Mafia guys anymore. You're killing Ski Mask guys, and it makes it kind of Call of Duty-ish. You do get to kill some men in black dudes later on. It does get better near the end, though, right at the end where you're in the Acer building. The design of the level is very interesting, and as soon as you walk through the door, you get your nutsack ripped open. And this is at the lowest difficulty level. Ah, <sighs> well, I took care of that problem. Now I can just get over here and take care of whatever next pro- Wait, wait a minute. Is that bombs? What? Oh, okay, apparently that was three guys with grenade launchers. Well, I've got a little surprise for them, uh, Scopey Scopey. Scopey Sco- oh. We know you're over there. <laughs> Shit, I'm almost dead, I'm almost dead. Oh, I got him, I got him. Okay, got one, I got one. Now I get the other one. I got two, I got two, I got two. Oh no! I am playing the game in a legitimate manner with legitimate rules. There's nothing. You cheated not only the game but yourself. You didn't grow. You didn't improve. You took a shortcut and gained nothing. You experienced a hollow victory. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I've only ever beaten Max Payne legitimately with no cheat codes once in my entire life, and that was the PS2 version. And that version's the easier one. <laughs> I know there's people out there who think this is the easiest fucking game in the world, but I'm not one of them, man. This game is hard on my nuts. Like driving a tractor with a metal seat going down a cotton field sideways. Anyway, Max knocks over a tower on top of a helicopter with the Wicked Witch is dead. And then it was all over. And it is over for us. That is the end of this review, and that's all I'm gonna do of this review. Fuck this review. Ah! So what did we learn about Max Payne today, kids? Are all these modern games out? Is Max Payne still a good game in 2019? I would say so. It's not perfect. It wasn't perfect back then, though. So I think it's still solid. I think it's still very solid. There's still a whole lot of people that think so. There's still many, many people that think Max Payne is a wonderful game. And I'm one of them. It's not perfect, but it's good. So. My rating for this game, and I don't normally do ratings, but I think it's worth it for this one. And I give it a rating of this. It's still good, it's still good! I'm glad you liked this video. I'm assuming you liked this video because you watched it till the end. Follow me on Twitter, that's I'm Stuart K. Riley. I also have a coffee, that's K-O-F-I. You can donate money to me there, and I will buy games to review on here for you. Ain't that a good system? I think it's a good system. So subscribe to me on YouTube down yonder and uh, click that bell thing. I think you need to click that bell thing now to even see my subscription thing come up now. I don't know what YouTube's doing nowadays. But uh, <clears throat> my name's Stuart K. Riley. This is Working Man Games. I'll see y'all when I see y'all, I reckon. You tired of me doing that? What if I did this? Smoke on camera. I'm out.